Okay, I've got a very traditional um, rad set up. I'm using my pre-sender, uh, it's actually an ascendry, I'm sorry, ascendry. And I've got my uh, pulley attached through here rather than up here because on a, an ascendry you can't really do that. But this is classic. The question is, what is the mechanical advantage of this system? Well, it depends. What's the mechanical advantage with respect to who? Me as the climber, where I'm both the climber and the, the uh, puller, or to somebody on the ground? Well, let's look at both. Let's take the ground person first. If a person on the ground pulls here, we have nothing more than a one redirect right here and a two to one pulley system right here. This serves as an anchor. I could just as well have this tied off to a separate anchor from the rope and we'd have the very same thing. So when he pulls, he gains no mechanical advantage through here, at least not force multiplication. But he does here because there are two strands supporting my weight. Again, we have to realize we're, we're talking theoretical, so we've got lossless here and lossless here. And of course, we all know in reality, a Grigory is nowhere near lossless. But that's the theoretical concept. So if he pulls whatever I weigh, he has to pull half of that. Now, as I have discussed in previous videos about pulley principles and things like that, if he has to pull with half my load, or he's got a two to one mechanical advantage, he has to pull twice as much rope. So to a person on the ground, he's pulling against the anchor. So he's not helping me go up and then in the direction he's pulling. What is helping is this strand right here and this strand right here. That's what supports me, the load. So it's a two to one. Here's the thing, when I take hold of this rope right here, I'm holding it, I'm coming back, hang loose, I'm holding it and there are three strands supporting me. This one is, this one is, and I'll show you these on. I just pull myself up. I'm completely suspended and, and there are three strands of rope supporting me. I could just as well have terminated this rope on my harness with a pulley right here. And it'd still be three strands of rope. Now, when I'm supported with three strands of rope this way, what's the loading in each strand? Well, my weight is divided up evenly among the three strands. So if I weigh, let's, let's use 150, it's easier to work with. If I weigh 150 pounds, I've got 50 pounds here, plus 50 pounds here, plus 50 pounds here. So if I pull right here, how much do I have to pull with? I have to pull with the force that's in this line, 50 pounds. How much weight am I moving up? 150. So by supplying 50 pounds here, I'm moving 150 pounds up. That's three to one. No doubt about that. Now, what's really touchy is how much rope do I have to pull? Let's go back to the ground guy. Let's recall he's on a, re a two to one with a redirect. So he gains no force multiplication at this pulley. Only right here, got a two to one. So if he's pulling half my weight to get me to go up one foot, he has to pull two feet of rope. Again, 150 pounds moved up one foot is 150 foot pounds of work. Half of that is 75 pounds times two is 150 pound, uh, foot pounds of work. So you, that's got to balance. Now, let's go back to me. When I pull, we've already established that if I weigh 150 pounds, I have to pull with 50 pounds of force. That's a third of my weight. Go back to the pulley principles and those early segments uh, where I talked about this, we find that whatever the mechanical ratio is, that determines how much rope has to be pulled through to uh, move the weight the same distance. So if, if I 
move me one foot off the ground, I have to pull three feet of rope. Now, this one's hard to, to grasp, but if, if we put a piece of tape right here, right at my eye level, and I pull myself up one foot, by the time I'm up one foot, this will have moved down three feet from my eyes. We're talking about climber reference here. So again, if, if I have tape right at my eye level, when I pull this down, you can already see, you can almost see it here. Let me take some slack up. All right, my hand's right at that pulley. When I pull that down almost a foot, I've, I've not even hardly left the ground. That's because I've only moved up a third of a foot. So if I pull back up here again, I can get another third of a foot. And now I'm two thirds of a foot off the ground. And when I do it one more time, I'm a full foot off the ground, but I have pulled with my hands through this pulley three feet of rope. It has to balance. You can't have me pulling one foot to go up one foot or two feet to go up one foot if the work involved doesn't balance on both ends. It has to balance on me, it has to balance on the force through the distance here. We can talk about what's happening on the ground with the rope as I pull. It doesn't matter. We cannot get away from the fact that if I'm going to move 150 pounds up one foot and I'm applying 50 pounds to do that, I have to move that 50 pounds through three feet. If, if, if I wouldn't go out of range of the camera, I would do this for you and you could see it and you could measure it, but I, we could actually measure it. But I, I think you could probably almost see it from here. Look how much rope I pull through here and I really can still stand on the ground. So I haven't pulled myself up a foot. And I've got to reach back up here and do that again. There's another foot, and I'm still not a foot off the ground. And the place to measure from would be right here. Or even right here. So if you have a three to one, you have to pull three times as much rope through as the load moves. You just can't get around it. So in summary, a RAD system is a three to one system Theoretical, zero friction through the devices to the climber if he's pulling himself. If somebody on the ground is pulling him, it is a two to one. He will pull half the climber's weight and he'll have to pull that force twice as far as the climber moves up.